we don't have a watchman the conscious mind is not developed which means there's no watchman and everything that you listen to from the environment or everything that you expire experience from your environment will directly go into your subconscious mind so i come to one of the most important points of this discussion and that is that the time period between the age of 3 years to 8 years is probably one of the most important time periods of our life and the reason being that most of our critical programs of life are written in this age between 3 to 8 years why is that because there is no watchman the conscious mind is just about forming and developing so the doors to the subconscious are almost open in fact until the age of about 6 or 7 we are all almost in the state where we are completely vulnerable we are open and exposed to the outside world whatever we see whatever we absorb directly goes into the subconscious mind now you'll be amazed and surprised to know that most of our critical programs of life programs related to money programs related to relationships and programs related to health are written in that time period so if for some reason we were programmed incorrectly about any of these we would see the implications of those throughout our life let's take a little example let's say i was very young and i was you know studying math and you know i went for a paper i did my exam and i got all zeros okay I got everything wrong i got all zeros so somehow in my mind as a little child i would say i am not good at math math is very hard and when i say that i am actually telling that to my genie math is very hard as soon as i come home and i show the report card to my parents my parents would tell me that these sums were so easy how come you did not do it you know the other child your friend was easily able to do it how come you are not able to do it so what has happened started happening there's comparison there's comparison between two children so now deep down somewhere i start thinking that maybe i am not good enough i am not good in math i am not good enough and not good enough as the other child so what really happens is you know we are listening to all these things from the environment and we start assuming those to be true for a young child whatever he or she is listening to in the environment is assumed to be true and there is a lot of exposure to children nowadays if you really see the exposure is in form of the media which is essentially television it's movies it's the social media can the internet and all of that it's all these tools are great but if they are misused if they're not used in the correct manner then they start creating problems for children so all of these programs about our life are really written in a very young age most of them before the age of 8 and the rest of them by the age of 14 so think about it when we are born we are very powerful if you think about it a baby who's just one day old is very very powerful why is that the very fact that the baby is powerful is because the baby has no shame no guilt no fear you know when the baby gets angry he or she cries out so loudly doesn't even care about anybody and cries so loudly because there's no shame there's no guilt there's no fear have you ever seen a baby complaining about oh i don't look nice or my thighs are big i'm so fat have you seen any baby saying like that never because babies just love themselves just the way they are so as babies the good news is that as babies we were all very powerful but somewhere along the line you know when we started growing up we picked up the wrong programs and somehow we got programmed incorrectly and at some point in life most people start believing i am not good enough i can't do this this is not possible it's just not possible to do that so we catch all these wrong programs along the way now you know we all realize that you know this programming was done by our parents our teachers of for of, of you know of, from all the people around us the media etc etc but do you think we can even blame them for that no nope, we can't blame them because all of them were always trying to do their best based on what they knew our parents programmed us in a particular manner because that is what they knew that is how they were programmed 
So it's not really their fault. We now, as individuals, need to take charge of our life. They did what they could to the best extent possible. We now need to take charge of our life and look inside and find out those programs which are still hurting us so that we can change those programs to become a very, very powerful human being. The good news is, so far we have discovered that we are all very powerful. It's only the programs that are running us. Finally, let's talk about IQ. You know, we always talk about IQ, which is the intelligence quotient. In school, we were told that, you know, higher the IQ, more intelligent is the person, more likely would he be for success. Let's talk about the final, you know, aspect of the conscious mind. And that is the IQ. And IQ stands for intelligence quotient. In school, if you remember, we were told that higher the IQ, more as the probability of the person to succeed. Now ask yourself, does intelligence necessarily lead to success? We all know that that is not true. If you look back in your school, the person who topped in class did not necessarily top in life. Why is that? Because intelligence does not guarantee success. There are other aspects of life that need to be learned. In my mind, IQ contributes only 10% to the success of an individual. Okay, so we've now finished the powers of the conscious mind. Let's move on to understanding the powers of the subconscious mind, which is really the very powerful mind. Okay, the first power of the subconscious mind is what I call as the inner guidance system. You know, the, the subconscious mind is really your conscience or it is your inner little inner voice which is always there to guide you, which is always there to tell you what is good for you, what is not good for you, what is right, what is wrong. But do we ever take the time to even listen to that little voice? Well, that little voice knows everything about you because like we said earlier, the subconscious mind has no concept of time. It does not understand the past, present or the future. For the subconscious mind, it's just one dimension which means your subconscious mind knows everything about you. If only we take the time to listen to it, we can never really go wrong in life. And at some point you come to a stage where you get into what is known as intuitive living. And if you become a master at that, you can never ever go wrong in your life. Things would be just absolutely smooth. You know, the subconscious mind also is also acting like a radar. And what is the job of the radar? The job of the radar is to really protect the country from any enemies. The subconscious mind does exactly the same. If you are faced with any danger or if you are going to be facing anything that's, you know, that is going to hurt you in the future, the subconscious mind will always be there to actually give you a signal saying that something is not right. These signals are really something known as yellow alerts. It's alerting you that something is not right. You know, if you look at your relationships, suppose there's a relationship that's not working. Before the relationship really goes bad, you would get a signal that something is not right. So we get these signals to essentially fix things at the right time. But if we don't pay attention to them, it becomes serious. The yellow alert becomes a red alert. Same thing is for the case of our health. If something's going to go wrong with the body, you always get a signal saying something is not right. That's a yellow alert. If you don't pay attention to your body and if you don't fix the problem soon, the yellow alert would become a red alert. Okay, so that's one of the powers of the subconscious mind. Let's move on to the next. You know, the mind has a lot of special powers. And one of those powers which we experience day in and out is telepathy. I'm sure you've always, you know, you've experienced this that when you think of a friend, the friend suddenly calls you. And you're amazed, how did he know that I was thinking about him? And then you tell your friend, you're going to live a hundred years. I was just thinking about you. Now think about it. This is not a coincidence. This happens many times. This is known as telepathy. And telepathy is nothing else but the ability of one mind to communicate with another mind. Now does this work every time? No, it does not. And the reason it does not work every time is because we don't know how to use this machine. God gave us this wonderful machine called the mind, but he forgot to send us one thing, which is the instruction manual. 
If only we had the instruction manual, we would have been able to use all the powers of the spine. Well, God said, you figure it out. I will give you the power, you figure it out on how to use this power. So the special powers that the mind possesses allow you to do amazing stuff. For example, sixth sense, intuition. This is a power which actually gives you a sense of what's going to happen. A lot of people have sixth sense. A lot of people get intuitive feelings that something's going to happen and it ha happens exactly the same way. What about clairvoyance? Clairvoyance is a power wherein a person who's a clairvoyant is able to see far beyond what normal people can see. They can see the energy body around you, they can see your chakras in front of you, they can see what's going on at any point in the past, in the future, they are what is known as clairvoyance. If you've heard of Nostradamus, he was one of the best examples of a clairvoyant because he was able to see the future. Let's talk about another very interesting power which you can probably even do today. It's called remote viewing. Remote viewing is a power wherein you can actually be sitting anywhere and finding out what is going on at any point in the world. You can, you can also call it astral projection or you call it remote viewing. This is a power with which you can actually find out or sense what is going on at any place in the world at any time. Isn't that amazing? Well, that's a power that is there in all human beings. It's just a question of awakening those powers. It's a question of developing those powers and using these powers. All of us have these powers. You know, you can read people's minds, you can move things without touching them. That is known as telekinesis. There's another power called telemetry with which using one of any object of a person, you can find out where that person is anywhere on the planet. So suppose somebody gets lost, you can use telemetry to actually find out where he is. Isn't that amazing? There is so much power in, inside us and we don't even know. There are some people who are able to do amazing things. You know, there are some people who are able to live without food and water for years and years together. There are people who can live under water for several hours. There are people who can live under the ground for several hours. You can actually even float in the air. Amazing stuff is possible with the mind. Now, the question is, you might be thinking in your mind, why am I telling you all these powers? Well, the reason I'm bringing all these powers to your notice is because you need to know that there is a tremendous amount of power inside you. The question is not whether you can move something without touching it or not. Like, it doesn't matter really whether I have the telemetry powers or not, or whether I have the telekinesis powers or not. But the real question is, if I have so much power inside me, is it possible to use a little of this power to become successful and happy? That's all I want. I just want to live a successful and happy life. Well, the answer is absolutely yes. You can tap into this power at will, at any time, and use this power to create success and happiness in your life. And that's exactly what we're going to learn. Okay, so let's talk about confidence. Why is that some people are low in confidence and some of the, the others are very high in confidence? The reason for that is that, you know, we get so many experiences in our life. And sometimes those experiences are not as we want. If these experiences are negative or, you know, things have not gone exactly the way we want, we think that we are not capable, as a result of which our confidence goes down. But remember, we just mentioned about the little baby. The baby is very powerful and when you were a baby, you were powerful too. Somewhere along the lines, you picked up some wrong programs and those programs are now driving your life. And because of that, you may be experiencing the confidence going up and down. So really, it's a matter of understanding ourselves and clearing up those programs in the past to make you naturally confident. Okay, so for the conscious mind, we, worked, we talked about a concept called IQ. We are now going to talk about a concept called EQ and SQ. Now, EQ and SQ are both related to the subconscious mind. Let's talk a little bit about EQ. EQ stands for Emotional Quotient. And Emotional Quotient is really the ability to control emotions. 
how much can you control your emotions? Do you get angry very soon? Do you get upset very soon? Are you sad? Do you get, you know, hurt very soon? Do you get jealous and you stay jealous? You're all human beings, so experiencing all these emotions is not a problem. But staying stuck in these emotions is definitely a problem. Suppose you get sad for some reason, well, that's very normal, we're all human beings. But staying sad for days and days together, for months and months together, is definitely a serious problem. That's where the EQ comes into picture. The higher the EQ, the more emotional control you have about yourself. Let's talk about SQ now. What is SQ? SQ stands for spiritual quotient. And spiritual quotient is nothing else but knowing yourself better. Who are you? Where have you come from? What are your powers? And how can you use these powers to achieve success and happiness in your life? Well, like I said, nobody really teaches us this. So it's, it's our responsibility to understand ourselves, understand the powers that are there inside us, and know how to scientifically use these powers. The more better you understand yourself, higher is your SQ. You know, there's a very wrong meaning sometimes attached with spirituality. Spirituality generally gets connected with religion. Well, the fact is, spirituality is nothing else but knowing yourself better. So people who are able to control their emotions, which means their EQ is high, and people who know themselves better, who are able to use their powers, their SQs is high. Now EQ plus SQ controls 90% of your success. And that is why we see sometimes that people who are not even educated,